Hi, I'm John Harmon, and I'm going to show you why and how you can create your own packages for R. Let's start with why. The first reason to create a package is that it will make your life easier. Instead of digging through old code to find that function or wrangled data you used before and dealing with any mistakes past you made, you can simply type library, the name of your package, and all of those functions and data are available for you to use immediately. The second reason to create a package is that it's easier than you think. Hadley Wickham wrote an excellent book called R Packages that's available online or through Amazon, and you can read it in about an afternoon. While you're writing your package, you can refer back to it if you're not sure how to do something. When you create a package in R Studio, it even gives you a link to the book. That leads us to the next question. How do you create an R package? I'm assuming you have R and R Studio installed, and that you have or can create a GitHub account. You'll also need to enable Git in RStudio under Tools, Global Options, in the Git SVN section. The first thing you need to do is solve whatever problem you're trying to solve at least once. For this demo, I'll package up some US college data that I wrangled in a blog post, but you might start from a report you did for work or just by exploring a data set. To create a package in RStudio, start a new project. Choose New Directory, then R Package. The name of your package can consist of letters, numbers, and periods, and it must start with a letter and can't end with a period. I'm going to call this project US Colleges. I'm leaving the rest of the options as their defaults, and I want to create a Git repository, so make sure that box is checked. Our studio creates the skeleton of a project for you. Next, I'm going to hop over to the Build tab up here and check my build tool configurations. I want to generate documentation with Roxygen, which auto-generates help pages from structured comment blocks. And I want to go ahead and regenerate the documentation every time I build and reload the package. Now we're ready to create the package. First, let's get rid of that hello world file in the R folder so we don't forget about it. I'm also going to delete the namespace file to make sure it gets freshly generated later when we build the package. Next, we'll add some information about our package to the description file. Hadley's book lays out what each of these fields mean, but they're fairly straightforward. The important ones are title, version, authors at R, description, and license. You'll usually also have some combination of depends, imports, and suggests. That should cover it for the description, so we'll save that. I'll leave it open to remind myself to update the version when we're done. This package is going to contain data rather than functions, so I'll start by telling RStudio that I want to wrangle some data through the useDataRaw function from DevTools. I'll start by loading the R Markdown document from my blog post. and then saving it in the data raw folder of my project. I plan to name the resulting data frame the same as my project, so I'll call this file uscolleges.r. Switching the rmd to .r confuses our studio a bit, so let's go through and delete all the markdown bits, leaving just the R code. I'd normally avoid ever using library while working on a package to make sure I don't miss a dependency, but since this package is just going to contain data, it should be fine. I need to update the paths here, then the rest of this should work.
I also need to copy the source CSV and Excel file from that directory over to here. We'll go ahead and run this code to get the tidy data. That code creates a bunch of variables, but all I care about is the tibble I make at the end, latest college scorecard factored. I'll create a new variable called US Colleges and set it equal to that tibble. Now all I have to do is call the useData function from DevTools with the argument US Colleges. That creates a data folder and stores the US Colleges tibble in it. I'll also add the parameter overwrite equals true to make sure the data gets updated if I change something and run this file again. I also want to include the data dictionary in this package since it contains more information about the data. I'll add some code to clean up the dictionary, then use data to store the result. Now let's clean out the environment to make sure no local variables trick us into thinking the package is working when it isn't. Then we'll go ahead and build the package and see what happens. The first time you try to build a package, you might get a warning telling you to install something to make the process work. I had to install our tools on this machine, but it was easy to follow our studio's instructions. Before we go on, let's commit our changes. We've set up a lot and it would be a shame to lose it. Go to the Git tab in our studio and click Commit. Check all the boxes to stage your files. And enter a short commit message to remind future you what you did. Click commit. The changes are now saved, but only locally. Let's get them onto GitHub in case our hard drive catches on fire or something. Leave everything at default other than the repository name. When I write packages at work, I create private repos, but this one can and should be public. Create the repository. The or push an existing repository block here is the code we need to hook our local repository up to GitHub. Copy that and paste it in the terminal window in our studio. Now that we've backed everything up to GitHub, let's check our package in the Packages tab. We have help for that demo hello function and nothing else. Let's fix that. We'll create two special files in our R folder. First, we'll document the package overall. The hash single quote at the start of the line tells the package builder that this is a Roxygen documentation block. We can copy-paste the package, title, and description from the description file to build this help. If we're releasing the package, we can come back in here later and add more details. Below those, we need a dot .type tag to tell Roxygen this is a package, and a name tag with the name of the help file. The Roxygen block has to be attached to our code, so we put a null below the block. Now we can save the file. 
We'll call this first one 00packagehelp.r to make sure it stays out of the way if we add functions later. Next, we need to document the data. We start with the short description of the data that will be displayed in the list of help pages. Our package title can serve as a starting point, but it shouldn't be title case here. Next, we should expand that into a sentence or two. Below that, describe the format of the data. I use Glimpse from the dplyr package to help give me a summary. If the data had fewer columns, I'd describe each one here, but 622 seems excessive. Instead, let's reference the data dictionary and link to its help. Finally, I'll provide the source of the U.S. College Scorecard data. To tell Roxygen what this help is about, put the name of the data frame in quotes below the Roxygen block. We'll document the data dictionary in the same file. The general format is the same, but this time we'll describe each of the columns explicitly. We'll save this file as 01datadefinitions.r, again to make sure it stays out of the way of any functions we add later. Finally, let's clear out that leftover hello.rd file in the man folder. Let's build our package again. The help now lists our package and the two data frames. The help is automatically formatted by Roxygen using the tags we passed in. At this point, I consider this package almost ready for release. I mentioned some things I'd still like to clean up so I'll increment the version to 0.1.0. Let's go ahead and commit all of these wonderful changes and push them to GitHub. If you'd like to use this data, you can use Install GitHub from DevTools to install it. And that's a package. Obviously, there are many things we didn't cover, so let me know in the comments or on the R4DS Slack if you have any questions.